Hey, I'm Krista Wax. You're listening to MSP Sound on KFAI, and I am just ecstatic. I have Sim One with me. Hi. Hello. <laughs> oh my gosh. So happy to be here. I, I took the words right out of my mouth. I'm so happy <laughs> to see you. Happy to talk with you. It's it's been a while. It's been a long time. <laughs> a hi- a hiatus, truly. Absolutely. I, I saw you perform at Big Turn in 2020. I know you've had some shows in between there, but that was the last time that I saw you perform. And that was kind of the last big, I think you said earlier. Like truly. Like, yeah, truly the last big hurrah. That was like a festival that really joined together a bunch of Minnesota artists from a bunch of different areas. Like I never knew that such a big festival type thing happened uh, out in, I don't remember where it was. Was that Red Wing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was honestly so cool. I was like, whoa, all of these different spots um, in uh, this city I've never been to before. So that was really fun. It was fun. I know I love that event and I love just the different places, not just seeing, not only just seeing all the different artists that perform, but where they're performing you were in a art store yes (laughs) i know it was honestly like when i got there i was like wait what's happening but it was cool to see how like they transformed all of these different locations just all around the city into venues like oh this is gonna be a venue now like i love that little pop-up feel Uh, so that was really fun and uh everyone who came out was really supportive so that was just super fun for me (laughs) <laughs> but I know that was uh, that was such a fun highlight and I'm so glad that I went just because who knew who knew what was gonna happen <laughs> truly like it was just full of surprises so that, yeah that was really cool it was so awesome it was I know it'll be <laughs> back next year right it oh. will fingers crossed. yes yes <laughs> But not only I didn't just bring you here to reminisce. I mean, that's just fun too. Oh, yes. <laughs> but you have a new EP. I have a new EP. I'm so excited for it. Uh, it's coming out on my birthday on March 25th. Yep, just a little birthday gift to myself and everyone else. <laughs> what? Yeah, yes. I'm, uh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's going to be all about, um, well, as I was creating it, um, I realized that it's all about the uh, stages of grief that I've experienced. And, you know, they say that the five stages of grief are denial, sadness, anger, bargaining, and acceptance. And I didn't recognize that as I was kind of piecing these songs together and put them in the order that I did, that it directly translates to that. Um, But it is truly an EP of uh, uh, grief that I experienced, grieving the person that I used to be and the lives that I wanted to live and that will never be. And through like these hyper realistic and futuristic lenses, I kind of saw these stories come together within like I I saw these themes within these songs like after the fact of creating them and I'm just like whoa uh this like is such a weird kind of realization to have um for this EP but it's uh it's so fun each song is so different like as you listen to each song they're all so different from each other but all still following, uh, falling underneath like the genre, general genre of pop. Um, so uh, I'm just so excited to release it. Some of the songs in there are seven years old and have yet to be released like seven years later. I'm just, I'm so happy to be able to finally give these songs away to people. So yeah, it'll be really fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was my next question was, well, first of all, the EP is amazing and fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Fans of electro pop will love it. Fans of oh, yes. love it. I'm fall into both categories. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fan. It's so fun. And so it's so great. And that was going to be my question. Did you work on this during the pandemic, which maybe a little bit, but wow, you wrote these songs like 
some of them seven years ago. Uh That's that's incredible. What made you bring them back out now or put them out? Yeah, I well, the one that is seven years old is uh, the last song on the EP, Lonely Nights. And I just felt like uh, it was always put on the back burner uh, as well as um, never fully realized in the way that I wanted it to be. Um, I had a lot of growing to do in the way that I was recording as an artist. I always thought that you needed to like sing as loudly as possible, as strongly as possible. Um, but I come from a theater background, so that's why I was doing that. <laughs> um, and instead, I should have been really playing with softness and whispers and uh, control instead of just shouting into the mic. But you know, I was never trained as a like recording artist, and so I'm so thankful to uh, the people that I started working with. Um, with Roe uh, of Static Panic, uh, who she just totally showed me how to like record in the way that you should record. I'm just like, uh, whoa, this sounds so much better. <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> but no, I'm so thankful to all the producers that are, are also on the EP. Roe is one of them. Uh, I Died, who I've been working with for uh, pretty much my entire career. Uh, solo career um, is on it um, and Shading the Sun uh, is also on it and the uh, title track All That You Want. So I'm very excited for all of them to also shine. Yeah, I was excited to see that you had a couple tracks with Ro. I'm a huge Static Panic fan, of course. Falls yes. very closely with your music. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How did you two end up collaborating together? Yeah, um, I performed at, well, I know that she first, I think, saw me at uh, Ice House. I was performing and she always (laughs) tells me how, like, when she saw me, she was like, oh, my God, who is this? What the heck? Who is this? Um, And I had already known about her from a mutual friend um and she uh i i just found about her through that mutual friend and he told me that she uh would be someone to get connected to and i was like okay cool give me her number (laughs) and so when i just call her up and i'm like hey would you ever think about like maybe like doing a show with me i'm like trying to do an event series and she's just like uh yes (laughs) And later I find out that she was just like, totally like, how is some Sim one Simone calling me right now? <laughs> so, but we can, became closer friends and um, we just uh, totally vibe with each other. She t- totally understands like what I want to, uh, like different areas of sound that I've always wanted to explore. She's like, yes, let's do it. Let's make these anime theme song openings, these happy hardcore songs, this hyper pop stuff. Like I'm so uh, happy and thankful that she's been uh, a person that I can call a friend and collaborator. Oh my gosh. I feel like that's kind of a dream come true. It's a collaboration. I didn't know I needed, but (laughs) it makes so much sense. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Totally. Totally. That makes sense. Wow. Okay. Well, that's, wow. That's incredible. That when you put all this together, some songs from a while ago, but how long were you working on this? I mean, was this, was this, I mean, during this time, (laughs) right? I know. (laughs) How do we even talk about that? But how, yeah, I guess like, how have you been during that time and how, did the EP, you know, come through that? Yeah. So I guess like, so that one song, seven years old, was always something that I wanted to release. And so that was great. But it also, in the meantime, I was working on other songs, other songs that um, Ro had already shown me that I was working on completing. Uh, I had a song from, I think, 2017, also with I Died, that I had already wanted to release as well. Um, and there was one song that I had 
just started working on uh, at the end of 2019 with Shading the Sun. Um, so once like uh, the pandemic started, I had all of these songs that I already wanted to do and complete and release, but it took a while to actually get just the effort and motivation to do it. Like the only song that I actually finished and released during the pandemic was uh, Midnight Crush. And that is the first song on the EP. And that one was like right at the beginning of lockdown. I think it was like April or May. And I'm just like sitting on my bed, just like blankly staring off into space, like feeling the darkness of it all, like of how badly I want to get back to real life. And so I had this just like kind of crazy hypnotic melody going through my head. And that was like the only thing kind of keeping me going for a little bit. So it's like four in the morning. I'm just producing. It's the only thing I feel motivated about um, at that time. And so that one was easy to push out because I was like, I need something to remind me of why I am here. <laughs> so it's this weird fever dream of a song uh, for me personally. <laughs> If you look at the lyrics, they don't make any sense. Midnight crush, car alarm, I feel the rush of a vanilla bar. Like, it is literally you're in a dream. <laughs> I mean, I love that song and I love it even more. I guess I never thought about the lyrics too much. <laughs> They're not to be really thought about too much. <laughs> Just know I was going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Which most of us were, yes. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, and that's such a fun song. I'm but... so glad. <laughs> <laughs> we needed to have some fun, okay? I needed to have some fun. That's literally what that song was there to portray. That, oh, it did, it did its job. That's great. Good, yeah. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, how fun. Okay, so that one came out. <laughs> came, that one came to fruition a little bit. Yes, yes. Uh, early on. Okay. Yeah. And then just kind of plugging away on tracks and working on it. And yeah, yeah. Here. Truly, here we are. Like, I, I lined them up in a way that I felt made sense. Like, Midnight Crush was kind of that crazy feel to it, at least for my own personal ties to it. Um, and so, uh, I had that one be first since it was the quickest one also to come forward. Um, and then uh, up next on the track list was This Week in the News. And that one is with I Died. And it's more of an emotional 80s pop heartbreak song, um, which I really love. Uh, and then All That You Want is definitely a darker electronic pop song. Uh, that has a lot of like glitchiness a lot of analog synths within it um shading the sun is truly um incredible with the amount of uh production done with analog synths I, i've never done before i've never done a song like that and so just seeing him work watching him work on it was a really uh really cool experience uh like i'm literally as he's doing it just like dancing rocking out the entire time like i could literally just dance to the instrumental for like four hours uh <laughs> so it was really fun uh to do that and how have it be so glitchy um and then from here to there is another song with Roe and i um and that one is a kind of song about uh not heartbreak necessarily, but yearning for someone that will never, uh, that will never, um, see you, like that will never notice you. Cause it's, it is at literal lyric level, a song about an alien who sends a message in the future to someone that will never, uh, get it before that person, like, that will never get it in time for that person to respond to them because they'll already be dead. <laughs> I know. You're, you're 
we're in it. We're in I know. One. We're in it. We're in these futuristic lenses, okay? Yes, I love yes. it. Yes. Um, and then Lon- Lonely Nights is the really hyper futuristic uh, song that really ties my love of every- all things futuristic and sci fi together with the album or with the EP. Um, and it's about like, it- it's truly a a love note to who I used to be and who I used to go by, which was Simone Smash It and saying goodbye to that persona. Um, Send Your Lonely Nights Away is like the main uh, hook within the song. Um, And that is saying goodbye to that sadness, accepting that we've moved on and that the maybe future lives that we wanted to live are not going to be what we expected them to but there's still going to be something that we can honor and push for um uh, that is the my own personal meaning of it uh but in uh like on surface level uh the lyrics definitely tie to that entering the simulation vibe the uh we're in the matrix vibe that uh technology has the power to either destroy us or uh transform us um are all messages within that song too so very excited about that as well wow (laughs) i love this you are i mean i love the ep and i just love uh everything you just said that's (laughs) (laughs) for lack of any better words i just i i love this This (laughs) i'm so glad (laughs) i haven't had the chance to talk with anybody about it so this was this was really cool Oh, wow. Ooh. Well, wonderful. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. Um, I know. <laughs> All right. Well, what, you have a couple live shows coming up. Like you did just perform last week at the Turf Club, was it? Yeah. And oh my God, that was amazing. <laughs> so bummed I missed that. Oh but, my God. Um, Next oh. shows will be just as good. Okay. Yes, yes. I know. I'm yeah. like, I was, well, you made a great post today with different shows that, oh my gosh, I have to clear the calendar. Yes. What is happening? In two yes. Months. So um, any, yeah, it's, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yes. Uh, no, you're good. I know. <laughs> it's the okay. Zoom lag, you know? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have, uh, yeah, a couple shows coming up in April. So one of them is going to be on the 16th and that one is called uh, Neon Nightmares. Uh, It is a gallery style show, actually, uh, because it is a friend of mine, uh, Benja, is producing um, this release of different 3D sculptures that he's done using uh, 3D prints and scans. So he's done like these 3D renders of images, and one of them is a scan of me. So there is a neon bust that will be there that will be presented in normal lighting and then halfway through the show be presented in black lighting. So it's going to be all cool and futuristic and neon. (laughs) It'll be so fun. Um, And so I'll be performing there. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yes, that sounds amazing. That sounds so great. Yes, Yes. Yes. It'll be at the Jackson Flats. So that'll be really fun. April 16th. And then on April 21st, I will be supporting Lady Midnight, um, who I'm super freaking excited for. She's just released her album. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to support her in this way. It's been a long time coming, but I've we've always wanted to do a show together. So I'm glad it's finally happening. Oh my gosh, Sim. You're gonna, Sim one. You are going to get so tired of seeing my face. Uh- <laughs> I, I- that sounds like an amazing. I will movie. not. I will not get tired of seeing your face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying over that one too. I love Lady Midnight as well. Yes. And the two of you together. Mm-hmm. I'm dying. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that one's gonna be at the Ice House on the 21st. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's amazing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, were there any others? I feel like do you have a few more or no? There is going to be, um, yeah, there are a couple more. Uh, so I know one I'm trying to nail down, but is uh, currently just on the books. Uh, we have uh, a triple EP release show coming up. Uh, hopefully that gets solidified soon, but it's tentatively on May 26th at the 7th Century. 
It's going to be, uh, I'm headlining, uh, and uh, supporting me will be uh, Diva J and Scraps, uh, both of which are within the pop realm, but Diva J is more of a hip hop uh, leaning artist and Scraps is more of a, uh, definitely a pop artist. Um, so yeah. It's gonna be really fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what's better than one album release show is a triple release show. Truly. I'm like, uh, has that been done before? I'm gonna say this is the first time. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm leaning into that too. Yes, yes, this is the first time. That is incredible. <laughs> yes. I'm so excited. So yeah, that'll be really yeah. freaking fun. Mm-hmm. Hey. Yeah. Any, I don't know, like any what is my any any like sneak peek or any not a sneak peek but anything you want to share with us like that could happen at a show or like what you're planning is this like I mean your shows are fun anyways a similar yes, show is yes. a blast no matter what or right. any extra elements or anything anything you want to share you're just just come to the show and check it out <laughs> I definitely have some little surprises here. Uh, one of them being that I have just completed uh, recording the music video for Lonely Nights. So I am so excited to present that during the EP release show on uh, the 26th tentatively, if that is the correct date we will be going with, uh, fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, it, uh, it is a total, hyper futuristic very um very much uh blade runner energy um just it is whew, i look like i'm in a movie like i'm i'm i can barely hold on to all the content that i have for it because i'm just trying to plan out my social media calendar and just like give things away at the right time instead of blasting it at everyone but i'm just so excited for it um so that will be on display there, uh, the video release. Um, we'll also have all of the artists um, that have been with me um, on the EP. There's going to be I Died, Ro, Shading the Sun will be there. Brie will be there, or Scraps will be there. Uh, Diva J will be there. Um, and possibly some other artists that I commonly collaborate with either as backup dancers or backup singers. So very excited for that um yeah uh that's that's all i can share for now for what uh surprises will be in store for live events um i also have some exciting news for the record label that i co-own uh we uh placebo records um has a virtual venue a digital venue uh that we call fantasy and it's spelled with a ph and two i's at the end instead of a y of course it has to be weird uh <laughs> and i love it <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but we'll definitely have some really cool content to offer on there where uh, we'll be promoting more pop artists within the scene um and outside of Minnesota as well as we want to have Minnesota and the kind of cult uh, electronic scene that we have here get connected further to the national presences that exist. So we really want to collaborate with national presences and get our names out there as well. So uh, that's what we're hoping to do with fantasy. And we've received some pretty generous uh, grant funds and donations for that. So we're really excited to be able to support the artists and the people who are helping to make fantasy a reality. So, yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, that is so much that's happening in this. I know. Also. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Me too. <laughs> you have been very busy working on so much. I know. I, I'm like, have I been sleeping all right? I don't know. <laughs> But no, I have a ton of support and that's the only way I'm able to do this. Like huge shout out to everyone that I've already mentioned who has helped me with my music, who has helped me to progress this far and uh, to Kelsey Joe Geiger, my business partner with Placebo Records. Like I could not have done it with all of the support um, that I've received over the pandemic, especially like all of these people saved me truly. Legion, my graphic designer with Placebo Records, and uh, 
and Joss Danielson, our marketing person, like just all of these people truly shout out. If you're watching, I love you. You've, I would not be here without you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, oh my gosh. Sim one. All right. The EP, all that you want coming out March 25th, mm -hmm. also known as your birthday. Also known as my birthday. <laughs> Big day. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. I, I mean, normally at this point I'd say anything else going on, but there is so much going on. I feel like there's, I mean, if there is anything else. <laughs> no, 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 no. I can't say more. I can't. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> very exciting well we'll yes. almost keep an, be keeping an eye on your social media because you're so good yes. about posting and just yes. giving us little teases here and there about yes. what's happening absolutely that's the best way to keep in touch definitely so check out sim one social media facebook you're on instagram mm -hmm. twitter twitter uh tiktok gotcha. yes okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'd love to keep digging okay um digging is and I need to find you on the other yes side. oh yes <laughs> I mean I just post it to anywhere so just it, wherever you feel you like to hang out most okay it's there <laughs> well wonderful congrats on the new EP thank you thank Happy you early birthday thank you <laughs> And oh my gosh, it was so nice to see you again. And yes. it was way too long. And I will see you at one of your upcoming shows. I'm so excited. Yes, I'll get you on that guest list. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to squeal there. <laughs> I really haven't been socializing it. too much during it. the pandemic either, where I'm like, oh, oh. we're allowed to just be excited now, you know? It's been too long. It has. And it, it feels good to be excited about something. Yes. Well. That's okay. Exactly. Yes. Ugh. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It was such a blast catching up with you and everything that you were up to. This is amazing. Thank you for having me. Seriously, such a pleasure to see you again and to just share a moment together. I truly feel like I'm in front of you. I could give you a hug right now. I'm just like, yes, I miss you. <laughs> I feel the same way. Maybe we, we can see each other in person. Give a little yes. hug then. <laughs> yes, please. <All> right. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And we'll see you soon. See you soon.